All right, example one, find the slope of the tangent line to the graph of the function at the given point. So slope of the tangent line, that's talking about this, this m equals the limit, da 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 da. So that's what we wanna find. So that slope is equal to uh, the limit as h approaches zero and then the first piece is that f of x plus h. So this is your function. So I now I have to figure out, okay, well, what is x, f of x plus h? Well, what's inside the parentheses? x plus h. So what do you do with what's inside the parentheses? You plug it in for x. So plug x plus h into the x, and you get that. Well, now we gotta keep going. That was just that first little part. So minus, minus, f of x. Well, f of x then gave me, that's just eight minus three x. And it's really important that you are subtracting off the entire function, not just the first term. You're subtracting all of f of x, not just parts of it. So surround f of x with parentheses, otherwise it's not gonna come out the way we want it to. And then the denominator is just h. So your goal is to be able to plug this zero in for h, which means you gotta kinda work this out and hopefully get this h down here to cancel out. Okay, so let's just distribute in the top. Distribute the negative. And then keep going. So the eights cancel out, the three x's cancel out. And you're left with just negative three h over h. And the h's now cancel. And the limit, or that slope, is now just gonna equal negative three. Okay, so this is why we did all that limit stuff in, ch in chapter two in the previous chapter, is because it's gonna <laughs> come back in this one. All right, part B, uh, we've changed the function. Um, it's not gonna change what we do though. So take the limit. So H goes to zero. So now it's G of X plus H. So the X plus H goes in for x. So that means it's gotta be squared minus your original function, which was x squared. Okay, now we gotta simplify this. So there are a couple of ways you can go with this one. I'll do the one that's probably the most common, that's or the, the method students wanna use most often and that's to FOIL us out. Uh, the other way is to go, hey, you can factor this because uh, you have a difference of squares. Uh, but either way, it's gonna get you to the same result. Uh, so if you FOIL that, which most of you are gonna do, x squared plus two xh plus h squared minus x squared. So your x squareds cancel off So 2xh plus h squared all over h. You can cancel an h out from every term. And now you can plug the zero in for h and you end up with 2x. Oh, well that's kind of weird. You ended up with a 2x. In the previous example, you ended up just with a number. Well that's, not all that common, like this doesn't normally happen. It did for this, but not necessarily for any of the other ones. It did for part A because your original function, f of x, that was a line itself. So eight minus three x was something like this. Well, if you draw a tangent line on a line, you just get the same line itself. So it's just gonna be negative three. If it's not linear though, 
you're going to end up with some sort of a function as the slope. So you have to keep going just a little bit, though. It's not going to be a complicated process. Now is where you're going to use the point that they gave you. So at the point 2, comma 4, your slope, which we said was 2x, you're going to plug in the x value of the point. And so you get 4. It's not always, it's not always going to give you the y coordinate back. That just kind of happened with this one. Um, but once you get that result or that limit, if it's a function, just look at the x coordinate of the point, plug it in, and whatever you get as an answer, that's the slope of the tangent line. <clears throat> okay, so we are now at a crucial point in our study of calculus. So the limit is used to find the slope of a tangent line but it is also used to define one of the two fundamental operations of calculus, the derivative. So let's go ahead and define it. So the derivative of a function, uh, so the derivative of f at x is given by Uh, this f with like that little apostrophe, so that is f prime of x is equal to that same limit thing we were just working with. Provided this limit exists. <clears throat> So also, for all x for which this limit exists, or for wherever this thing exists, that f prime is a function of x. So when we do this, you're going to get a function out of it. <clears throat> okay, so let's look at what we just wrote. The derivative, f prime, is this. So in other words, the derivative is the slope of the tangent line. <clears throat> so when I asked you to find the slope of the tangent line, they're also asking you uh, to find the derivative. If they ask you to find the derivative, they're also asking you to pretty much get the slope of the tangent line. So they are interchangeable phrases. So just kind of keep that in the back of your mind. Also keep in mind that the function that the derivative is a function of x. So this new function gives the slope of the tangent line to the graph of f at the point x f of x, uh, provided that the graph is a tangent line at this point. So the process of finding the derivative of a function is called differentiation a function is differentiable at x if its derivative exists and a function is differentiable on an open interval from A to B uh, if it is differentiable at every point in that interval. <clears throat> okay, so those are just some vocabulary words for you. So now let's talk about the notation. So as we said before, uh, up in that definition, that F with that little apostrophe that is read as f prime of x. So if you see a y with that little apostrophe, that is y prime. 
All right, the next one is this little fraction. You have a dy over dx. So this right here, that is the notation that says, hey, this is the derivative of y, because that's the variable on top, uh, with respect to the variable that's on the bottom, which is the x. So this, the top is saying the derivative of y, the denominator says, with respect to x. So don't cross the d's out because it's like dy is one thing and dx is another. So it's not d times y over d times x. No, dy is like the entire variable. All right, and then the last one is when they've left off the y from that fraction. So if they say d over that dx and then there's something in here, that is the derivative of f of x. And most of the time they're gonna use it when they're giving out formulas um, so you're not going to see this one too often. You're probably not going to write it out yourself. It's these three that are going to be all over the place. So the dy over the dx, the way you say it is just dy dx. You leave out the word over. Um, then f prime, y prime, g prime, k prime, and so on and so forth. All right, so let's go ahead and stop the video here. And in the next one, we'll look at some examples on finding the derivative.